is our covenant day of new beginnings. Our prophetic declaration for the month of August is I'm redeemed for exploits. And we are looking at the subject unveiling the breakthrough power of kingdom stewardship. We started this teaching from the first service. And now we are looking at part 1C. Unveiling the breakthrough power of kingdom stewardship. Part 1C. We've had some very strange testimonies this morning. Of what kingdom stewardship can do. From that testimony that was read unto us. Somebody just serving God, lost in God, being involved. Very, very committedly in Operation 615. And our pastor humorously made it 616. Praise the name of the Lord. And then suddenly the heavens open. We want to land this. How many copies? How many quantity? What's the quantity? Say 600. Six what? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> I think you are just pulling my legs. Maybe you mean to say 50 or 60. Say no, 600. Empty your shop anywhere you can get it. And so everybody started running helter skelter. That's how blessing, embarrassing blessing will hit you. Because of kingdom service. You can't serve God and go down. Hallelujah. Unveiling the breakthrough power of kingdom stewardship. It's good to remind us to know that the end time church is a reigning church. It's a breakthrough church, not a struggling church. Psalm 87. Psalm 87 and verse 1 beginning. This is foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gate of Zion more than all the dwelling place of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of O city of God. Verse 5. And of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her. And the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he righted up his, the people that this man was born there. <laughs> when they are mentioning great people in Zion, your name will be mentioned. So Zion... It's a reigning church. The end time church is a reigning church. It's a church of giants. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reign, by one man much more, they, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one man, Jesus Christ. So the end time church is a reigning church. It's the dominion church. Psalm, 1, 1, Psalm 110 and verses 1 to 3, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. You know what? If your enemy is your footstool, that, that is what? Dominion. Dominion. When your enemy, your leg is on top of the neck of your enemy. Your enemy is on the ground and your leg is on top. That's a footstool. Just you have foot mat. He said, your enemy will be fools too. Dominion. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemy. The end time church is a reigning church. It's a ruling church. Thy people shall be willing in the days of thy power, in the beauty of holiness, from the womb of thy money, that thou hast the due of thy youth. They shall be willing in the days of the power. The power of God shall be so much in Zion, in the end time, that everyone will be running there. Joel chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, talks about the end time church. Mighty men, people that will shake their world. 
Praise the name of the Lord. That is the status of the end time church. And you and I are redeemed for exploit. Not as mediocre, but as exploit. Inside of us is a giant waiting for manifestation. Inside of us is greatness waiting for exhibition. Inside of us is the seed of greatness waiting to take our proper place. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 15, we are called pacetas. The end time church will dictate the pace. Why? Because we have genes of greatness inside of us. Genes of greatness. We are from a giant family. We are not permitted to die as a dwarf. We saw that seed in Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. He became great. We saw that seed of giants in Isaac, in Genesis chapter 26, and verses 12 to 14. He sowed in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. And this man was great. He went forward, he grew until he became very great. And he had possession of flocks, heads, store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. They didn't pity him. We saw that seed of giants in Jacob. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verses 9 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verses 9 to 14. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eyes. As an eagle stared up her nest, flouted over her young, spread abroad her wings. He took them, buried them upon his wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. There was no strange God with him. And what happened? He made him to ride on the low places of the earth. Where the high places of the earth. That he might eat the increase of the field. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil. Out of the flinty rock. Verse 14. Butter of, of Cain, milk of sheep. Fat of lamb, rams of the bread of Bashan. Goats with fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grave. He made him to ride upon the high places. Distinction. Pesetta. We saw these our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with this gene of greatness inside of them. We also were embedded with genes of greatness. We are in the era of kingdom stars. We are supposed to shine. Praise the name of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 to 2, the Bible talks about the end time, end time church. How the multitude will flow into it. Praise the name of the Lord. Multitude will flow into it. It shall come to pass in the last day, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established above the hill of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow. The church shall become an attractions because that is the domain of stars. That is the domain of kings. Obadiah 121, he says, Saviors shall be in Zion. Saviors, you don't know who Savior is. Problem, I mean, solution carriers in the different fields of life, they shall be domicile in Zion. In the engineering world, heavy juggernauts. In the business world, in the ac academic world, in every career, they will be domicile in Zion. And so the world will come to be looking for them. Who doesn't want to be in the company of successful people? So every redeemed child of God is a potential star. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. He took Abraham, look up. What do you see stars? He said, so shall be your children. Do I have Abraham's children here? Yeah. Are you sure you are part of us? Yeah. Then you are a star. You are a star. Hallelujah. Say, I'm a star. In Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 16. Jesus has 
I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. If Jesus was a bright and morning star, as he has sent him, so send I you. We are also bright and morning star. Bright one, not dull one. Praise the name of the Lord. Bright, you, bright so bright enough, conspicuous to your generation, which means you cannot be hidden. That your business will not be hidden. I didn't hear a better amen. And every star shines. Arise and shine for your light has come. Isaiah 61. Every star shine. So I see you shining this month. I see your career shining this month. And another thing about star is every star is located where? Every star is located where? And that's why God told Abraham, Abraham, look up. He didn't say look down. When you want to look at the star, where do you look? Where do you look? So where are you supposed to be? Not down. So you are a star. You must shine. And you must be up, not down. Praise the name of the Lord. So we are redeemed to be up. We are redeemed to shine. Get set before this year is over. You will step into nations you have never stepped in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will sit with people, people that matter in life as never before in the name of Jesus. There is a giant inside of you waiting for expression. But one major potential that will lose the giant inside of you is dedication. 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 Dedication, a covenant platform for the rise of giants. What is dedication? Number one, dedication is sticking to a cause. Sticking to a cause. Stick to a cause. That's what dedication is. Sticking to a cause. Those days, when the use of letters was very much alive, you go to the post office and you buy what? Stamp. You see, remember? Can you see, remember? And you now gum it very well to your letter. The, the only guarantee that that letter will get to your destination is for that stamp to remain stuck to the letter. And so in most cases, you don't even trust the original gum on the stamp. You say, I don't want to take chances. You, you buy your own gum and add it. In the process, you overput the gum and you start reducing it again. And then you stick it very well and do it like this and blow breeze. You are looking at me as if that's not what we all did. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And then the letter begins to move. Stay committed to the stand, stay committed on the letter to get to the destination. The only way where you can achieve what God has designed for your destiny, you can achieve your dream in life. You can fulfill your destiny in life. It's a life of dedication. The only way you can get to that glorious place that God wants you to get to in life is dedication. The only way that your destiny will not be scuttled by the enemy is a life of dedication. The only way your journey to greatness will not be cut short is dedication. Dedication. Sticking to a cause. What is this? dedication number two? It means to be deadly committed. John chapter 12 verses 24 to 26. To be deadly committed. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruits. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, 
Let him follow me and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Hallelujah. Except a cone of wheat falls into the ground. The way up is down. The way to rise in life is to bend down, to serve dedicatedly. Down. Down. First, first of all, you must go down in service before God can lift you up. Falls to the ground and die. Die. Your reputation must die. You must lose consciousness of who you are. How can I be sweeping? I know how many cleaners I have in my house. That's your house. In God's house, we are all children. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. My reputation is dead. Even concerning Jesus, the Bible says he made himself of no reputation. Forgot about who he was as the son of God, but he, he took that noble assignment, he died. He despised all the shame. Except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. The process of the damnation of a seed is not easy. You dig a hole and put the seed inside, not just even on the surface. You put it inside the ground and you cover it. At that time, nobody knows there is a seed there. If you are too conscious of reputation, you can't be dedicated. You can't serve God. You are too conscious of the chair they put you, the place you sit in church, the name they call you. There are some people now, they call them, they forget their title, you are in trouble. They are in trouble. It's just a new convert, he doesn't know who is who. And then he just knows that you are John. They say you are John or you are, you, you know, you are Peter or whatever. And he's looking for something. He wants to join a unit. And they said, that's the leader of the unit. Just ask for John. And then he doesn't know. And he comes and says, excuse me. Please, are you brother John? Your eye changed immediately. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, what, what, what did you say? He said, brother John, sorry for your information. I'm not brother, I'm deacon. I'm one of the first deacons ordained in this church. Not even anyhow deacon. Very senior deacon. Praise the name of the Lord. Deacon is deacon. Which one is? First, no, praise the name of the Lord. He made himself of no reputation. Service not tied to. Service not tied to. Praise the name of the Lord. The seed enters the ground dead. Nobody knows there is a seed there. That's a period of no significance. No recognition. Praise the name of the Lord. And then the seed remains inside the ground. Goes through the internal heat inside the ground. It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable. If you want to understand what I'm saying, you can go and dig the ground and cover yourself temporarily. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. It is that internal heat inside the ground that forces the outer coat of the sea, breaks the endocap. Praise the name of the Lord. And it ruptures it. And if you are not careful, at that stage, if you open the ground, you see the rupturing seed. You say, this seed is, is bad. You know. Inside that rupturing, there is a new embryo inside. And after sometimes you see, you know, you know, a seedling begins to grow, a tender one begins to grow and grow, and that is the one that goes big and becomes fruit, and people now begin to feed on it. But there is a time of rupturing, there is a time of heat, there is a time of discomfort, there is a time of no significance. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That's dedication. When you are dedicated to a cause, your ego will be touched. Your personality will be touched. All those God will prove you because before he approves of you. He has a position of honor for you, but he will test you first. He will test you first. You are cleaning in the toilet and somebody comes in and says, ah, which people they sweep this thing? They know they think. Why then go keep this thing here? And you are there. And you had it very well. The devil will be staring you. 
You see what I'm saying? Nobody, you bring yourself to this level. You can't clean toilet. Praise the name of the Lord. Something inside of you will say, the devil will say, answer them. Answer them now. <laughs> Before you know, you see yourself following the person and you peep. Another spirit is saying, relax, 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 relax. You're now cool. Okay, no problem. <laughs> And then when you turn, heavens give you a pass mark. Okay, he didn't reply. Praise the name of the Lord. Dedication. It goes with discomfort. It goes with all manners of discomfort. But if you can stick to the course, if you can focus your eyes on God and not any other thing, you will soon enjoy honor. Praise the name of the Lord. Except a corner of it falls into it and that it, it abided. But if it dies, it brings forth fruits. So much so that later on all the birds of the air come to become to feed. On that same. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no glory without dedication. It is dedication that provokes the glory. John chapter 4 and verse 34. Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me and to finish his course. Not to get truncated dedication. If you don't know your identity, you may end up as a non-entity. Understand who you are and stay. Look, you are not a failure. There is a giant inside of you. The world will soon know you. All that you need to do, remain dedicated. Remain dedicated. Hallelujah. If you don't know your identity, you end up as a non-entity. If you want to attract attention in life, you must pay attention. You must pay attention. If you want to attract attention, you must pay attention. Pay attention to your service to God. Pay attention to your work with God. Don't do it haphazardly. Praise the name of the Lord. We have various examples of those who are dedicated in scriptures that we can follow. Jesus is a major example. He gave his life for us. That's the highest level of dedication. He gave his life for us. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 10 verses 17 to 18. He gave his life to us. He said, no one take it. I have power not to lay it down. I have power to lay it down. I have to take it. But I decided to lay down my life. When they were looking for him, they couldn't even know who is Jesus, who is Jesus. They say, here I am. They fell back. He had the power to kill all of them at that moment. He was the one who showed himself to them. Because he was walking under a prophetic agenda. It was prophecy to be fulfilled. He just opened his mouth, they fell down. He can command angels, legions. But he laid down his life. He laid down his life. He dedicated himself for the salvation of you and me. For the life that we live now, somebody paid the price. What price are you paying? Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham was a man who can be accounted to be a dedicated person. Genesis 12, 1 to 4. And to God's instruction. Never argue God's instruction. He didn't know where he was going, but all the same, he obeyed God. He became great. Genesis chapter 17, verses 9 to 12. God gave him an instruction to circumcise all the male. He did it, including himself, even at that age. Genesis 17, 9 to 12. In Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 18, God demanded for his only child. He laid down, he, de he was dead. Every instruction, he responded with excitement to it. And finally, in Genesis chapter 24, we saw the end, how he ended. God blessed him in all things. A dedicated person will always end up in blessing. Nehemiah was another dedicated person. He dedicated his life for the cause of the gospel. He vowed that this one must be rebuilt. 
No, 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 no. My father's house cannot be broken down this way. He left his comfort in the palace. He ran to go and build the wall. He suffered all the inconveniences, took all the risk, and then we saw how God exalted him. He became a governor. He was appointed a governor in the land. Paul the Apostle could be referred to Apostle of Dedication. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. In other words, my entire living is to please him. Nothing matters to me than to please him. So I can forgo anything just to please him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, he said, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. He put himself under a curse so that he can remain dedicated to that cause. Whoa. Whoa. Hallelujah. He said, I have nothing. I'm keeping. I'm crucified with Christ. My body is dead. My comfort is dead. Everything about me, dead. Only for Christ to live in me. That word, I, signifies your personality, your reputation, everything about you. He said, I've laid it, laid it, nailed it. It is not what I want, but what he wants. It's not my will, but his will. Galatians 2, 20. And in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 38, he began to tell us that nothing is sufficient to stop him. It is God's for, God first. Nothing can deter him. He was so focused and committed doggedly and, and aggressively committed and dedicated. What can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? Romans chapter 8 and verses 35 to 38. Nothing. Is it persecution? Is it tribulation? Is it distress? Is it famine? Is it nakedness? Is it sore? Nothing. 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 Height, depth, principalities, power, nothing is sufficient. Things present, things to come. No, 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 no. Now he concluded by saying, nay, in all these things, we are more than conqueror. So a dedicated man is a, con you know, a man that will always conquer whatever forces. It's a more than conqueror man. You conquer everything if you are dedicated. Praise the name of the Lord. Dedication is a platform for the rise of of giant, and we saw how every one of them made mark in their generation. You will make a mark in your own generation. Yeah. I didn't hear your loud amen. Yeah. I didn't hear your loud amen. Yeah. So serving God is not a waste of time. No. We are investing into our future. We are investing into our future. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 to 8. Let's not be waiting well doing. We will reap if we faint not. Praise the name of the Lord. God is not mock. Whatever we sow, we reap. We reap is waiting. He's waiting for us in the future. Many years ago, I read a book. And in that book, he was giving us an illustration of how these nomadic people move. These nomadics that move with their cattle. And then in that book, he was given an illustration. He said they move by the water bank in one, one country. He said what they do is this. They take seed, raw seed, and pour it plenty into the moving waters. And then the waters carry the seed. Carry the seed ahead of them. And when the water waves blows the seed, blows seeds across the water bank. And then those seed begins to grow. Those seed begins to grow. Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody look at me and shout Amen. And then these people, when they begin to travel, before they get front, those seeds will have grown and then those trees will have started yielding fruits. And so as they are moving along, they will just be plugging the fruits and be eating. And be, that's how the service you do today speaks in the future. Every seed is an investment towards your future. Praise the name of the Lord. So every service you render to God today, it has the blessing waiting for you in front. So serving God is not a waste of time. 
God is not looking for those to use. He's looking for people to lift. He's not looking for those to use. He's looking for people to lift. Praise the name of the Lord. Just stay dedicated. Dedicated in prayers. Dedicated in following up all your new converts. Some consistently. They just give to the transportation of the newcomers and all that. They just give. Nobody knows them secretly. They are just doing that and they have stayed dedicated doing that ever since. Nobody knows them. They are just there. Some print humbies as they are led. Just dedicatedly doing that which they believe is to the advancement of God's kingdom. And in various other assignments like that, some secretly, that's what they do. They just give here, give, do, do, do. Just stay dedicated. The one who is a rewarder is sin. And you will not miss your reward. Stay dedicated in praying. Praying for the church. Praying for those in need, your brethren. In various areas, those challenged. Just be dedicated in doing it. And in due course, you will reap in the name of Jesus. Well, today is our covenant day of new beginnings. And I did tell them in the first service, I said, no matter what failure you have encountered before, it's not final. Can I hear you shout a louder amen? Yeah. It's not final. It's not final. The end of a thing ushers you to the beginning of another. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't let the devil tell you that you have no hope. No, that's a, a lie of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. In whatever area you may have failed before, you can begin again. It is your perspective of failure that needs to change. Because failure as it is, is not failure in the sense that people look at it. Whenever you do a thing and you don't get the result you desire, you have learned one way that that result cannot be gotten. And so next time, if you are to do that thing, you won't use this system. Is that not so? Praise the name of the Lord. So whatever area of life that looks as if you have failed before, you can start again. You can start again. Maybe you are not living your life right. Maybe you are not even born again. And everybody see you as somebody that is minus one. They feel you are so bad that nothing good can ever come out of you. That's a lie of the devil. Hallelujah. God makes saints out of sinners. He makes apostles out of murderers. Your own case is not a close case. Just take a new leaf today. Take a new leaf today. And then you see your destiny before your eyes begin to align towards greatness. Praise the name of the Lord. I told them that when the devil shows you an end, turn it to a bend. Turn it to a bend. The righteous may fall seven times, but God has promised that he will rise. Proverbs 24 and verse 16. He will rise. He will rise again. So no matter how many times you have tried to bring up that business, it seems as if it won't work, go again. It must work. Praise the name of the Lord. You must rise. You must rise. God will never leave you on the floor. You must rise. How do we therefore create a new beginning? Number one, I said, don't give up. Don't give up. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. A patient dog is better than a dead lion. There is hope. Stay hopeful. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. It may look as if you don't literally have any helper, but you have the greatest helper you don't know. Don't give up. 
It's not yet over until it is finally over. Don't give up. Hallelujah. You may be on the ground, but the good news is that you are not yet out. You are not out. Most, some of you watch wrestling. Sometimes you see they put somebody down, they are beating him. He's on the ground. Sometimes you are tempted to think that it's over. They take his hand. He does like this. He does like this. He does like this. And even when his opponent drags him up, he's doing like this. And sometimes nobody even needs to touch him again before he falls down. And you think everything is finished in him. They put him on the ground. Just when his opponent pounces on him, he's waiting for the referee to count. One, two, suddenly he jacks up. And before you know, the table overturns. You see him waking up. So you thought I'm dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So you may be on the ground, but you are not out. Your face may be, your eyes may be red, but refuse to cry. Praise the name of the Lord. There is hope. That challenge that you are passing through, it may have lasted, but the good news is that it's not everlasting. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, we people endure for the night, but surely joy comes in the morning. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't give up. There's hope for you. Until you give up, God will never give up on you. Oh, you may look as if you are wounded, but <laughs> it is turning for you as a star. A wise man says, beneath this ceremonial gown of a general as scars, without scars, there cannot be stars. In the real military setting, before you become a general, you must have seen wars and conquered. In fact, you will have traces of bullets in your body. You will have passed through places that you got wounded, you know, scars. Uh -huh. And then when you now return, that's when you are now decorated with the stars. And the day you get decorated, everybody with your ceremonial gown, you are looking, ceremonial gown, and then they are decorating you with everything, little glittering and everybody, everybody passing by, they will be saluting you. Anyone that passes through you, in front of you, they, they stand there like starch. Praise the name of Because you are wearing that ceremonial gown, but if they remove that ceremonial ground, there will be scars on that. If you are running for the scars, you cannot hang the stars. Praise the name of the Lord. So no matter the scars, very soon, you will soon be decorated with stars. Don't give up. Never consider your fall as a full stop when God calls it a comma. Never consider your fall as a full stop when God has only considered it as a comma. So it's not yet over. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 10. The bricks are falling down, but we will build with hailstones. The sycamore are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Hallelujah. Bricks are not as strong as his stones. When the bricks fall, you know bricks, blocks, when it falls, when God is building it back, he doesn't build it with bricks again. He builds it with his stones that are stronger. So God's restoration package never left you the same way you were before. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, I say let go of the past. Let go of the past. Let the past pass away if you don't want to pass away with this. Let the past pass. Let the past pass if you don't want to pass away with it. Remember not the former things. Stop referring to the ugly past. Don't dwell on your past failures or else you'll never have strength to take a step for a new beginning. Hallelujah. 
Let what is past that is not pleasant, let it go with the past. If there is anything you need from it, it is a lesson. Never carry over the details. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't carry away the details. Ah. If you know how much they stole from me in this business, all my capital. People are wicked. The boy I train, I put him there. He just carried the whole money, empty my account. 17 million. You know what I will have done with that 17 million? 17 million. Bring my calculator. It won't bring back the money. It will only add to your sorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. Let it pass. So that you can have strength to start a new beginning. Praise the name of the Lord. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. He said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. This is one thing I'm advising everyone to do. If you must get to your destination in life, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things that are behind. People who look behind, they go back. But those who look forward, they go forward. Stop looking backward if you don't want to go backward. Look forward. Praise the name of the Lord. Let go of the past. Number three, take steps. Take steps. Stop waiting. If you don't want to waste away, start from where you are now. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 14. Start from where you are now. Where you are now is the best place to start. So that when God blesses you so much, you will be an apostle to others of how faithful God is. You will be a source of hope to them to say, look, I was where you are. I was like you before. I equally had a challenge. I equally fell at a point in time. My business went down. But I started from the scratch again. And see where God has lifted me to. And then it will make you to know how to rely on God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Take a step. Take responsibility and stop blaming anyone. For your states. Oh, it is this. Oh, it is take its responsibility and take step now. 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 Somebody may have been responsible for your past. But you are ultimately responsible for your future. Oh, it was my uncle. Oh, it was this my friend that was my business partner that brought me to this level. Okay. Somebody may be responsible. But you are the one responsible for your future. What you do now determines what happens to you tomorrow. What has happened you cannot influence. But what should happen is in your hands today. Take a step. Number four. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. God is the God that turns, you know, turns things from nothing to something. Have faith that God is able to grant you what you desire. Have faith. Believe in God. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. He's the one who can establish you in that career. If you want that can say, establish that business, trust in God, believe in God. Believe also in yourself. It's not just enough to believe in God. If you don't believe in yourself, you are going nowhere. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. That's not an overstatement. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. 
Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I can succeed. I can pass this exam. I can be joyfully married. I can have my children. Praise the Lord. Believe in yourself. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Our sufficiency is of God. We are not boasting in our strength. We are boasting in God that is in us. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you don't believe in yourself, you can never do anything in life. You must carry a possibility mentality. Hallelujah. You must also believe in others. Don't just believe in yourself. Every man is a product of other people. There is no self-made man on earth. Hallelujah. People are a part of building your destiny. No matter the disappointment you have had in the past, you will still need the right persons in your life. So look out for people who have the potential to help you to attain the plan of God for your life. Believe in others. Believe in others. That other people disappointed you that does not mean that you will not need people in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. It's just like somebody who says, ah, one of my uncles or one of my siblings he had this accident. Water carried him. He went to swim and water carried him. And so I will have nothing to do with water in my life. I will not drink water. I will not bath with water. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not possible. It's not possible. So you will still need people. You will still need people. But look for the right people. By the help of the Holy Spirit. Who are going to where you are going in life. And connects. And then you get your destination. And then number five. Beware of destiny killers. Beware of destiny killers. There are things. Not just people. There are things also that kills people's destiny. That stop you from taking steps in life. You may think they are big, big things. No. I will, list, I will enumerate them to you now. Number one. Sympathy. Sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. People who like pity, they stay in the pit. They never live where they are. You see them couch themselves. And people ask them, sister, waiting now. Mm. Mm. I just they think again how that thing happened five years ago. And people surround them and say, okay, sorry. Ah, now, wow, this world is wicked. Now, wow. And some people are expert in sympathizing. They are heavily anointed sympathizers. So they will sit with you. Give me chair. So tell me how exactly the thing happened. And you start saying, as you are saying, they will be giving some exclamation. As you are saying, eh? Hey! And as they are sitting with you Before you know the atmosphere has changed Before you finish speaking You are already crying Because they, they, they have Injected you with the anointing You are giving They are making exclamation They say ah Now, wow. And before you know, my sister, I saw you. I saw you. And when you start crying, they will join you. It's okay. 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 Okay, let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Those people will keep you down. They will keep you down. Sympathy.
what he say is a destiny killer. You will never have courage to take a step. Okay, you have whatever it is, you have lost it. There is nothing you can do about it. If it is your job, if it is your that business money, you have lost it. There is nothing you can do. Yeah, they are not magicians. They can't concord. No, it is the one who will help you is God. And you must have the you must have the right you know disposition for God to intervene. Praise the name of the Lord. Sympathy. Destiny killer. Number two destiny killer is scorners. Scorners. You know scorners. Scorners. People who scorn you, who mock you. Mockers. Mockers. They will mock you. Say, <laughs> now wow. I hear say you don't start business again. <laughs> I see one small table for in front of your house there. <laughs> Waiting then they do that, then they do washman there. <laughs> Say, no, I've, I've just started my business. Eh, hey, your business. <laughs> oh, God. You say, if they do as if you know they think. <laughs> business. They will scorn you today until men mock you, God can't make you. When they scorn you, they are foiling you to your future. Don't be carried away. Everyone that became great today, they mock them. You know the kind of mockery they mock this commission. They mock God's servant. That time when this ministry started, there was nothing they didn't do. Mock and mock, my mock. They even printed handbills of mockery. Make magazines the way of prosperity preachers. And they said all manners of things. They would describe the church all manner. Is it all them? Praise the name of God. They will mock and mock and mock, mock us, scorn us, scorn us. They will look at you and say, Bros, bless you, I see you for mechanic village <laughs> yesterday. With some people like where we say they don't call like that. They, they carry on this. I see somebody like you, but I say, No, not be you. No, I know it can't be you because you, you, you wise past that one now. They will mock you. They will scorn you. Just face your front. Face where you are going. The same people they are coming to bow to you tomorrow. Praise the name of Scorners. Scorners. Destiny killers. Number three, intimidation. Don't let anything intimidate you. You are falling before you want to rise. And then that problem is challenging you. Don't let that problem intimidate you. Don't let the successes of other people intimidate you. Maybe you are in the same platform with other people before, and so you fell. Maybe in that business or in that career or something like that. And then when you want to rise up, Satan shows you where those people are and tells you, I will not be, not, be, not be your mate with that. You, you want to stand down. See where your mate is. See where you are. Wants to intimidate. Let nothing intimidate you. Start there. A little shall become a thousand. Every greatness begins from the scratch. The only thing you begin from top is digging a hole. But every other thing that became great, you start from the scratch. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't be intimidated. Number four destiny killers is people's opinion. Don't let people's opinion override your life. Praise the name of the Lord. People's opinion. People, everyone is entitled to his opinion. Hallelujah. Everyone entitled to his opinion. But for you, tell yourself, I can do all things. People can tell you, you can't succeed. You think, I don't think you are for business. I don't think in this career you can succeed. No, no, no. Not people like you. They can, that's their opinion. That's their opinion. Nobody believed in David, not even his father. They pushed him to the bush. They pushed him to the bush. When Samuel came, he was asking for the children. All those ones with big, big chairs, they came, you know, to... To show their muscle. And he now told, so he said, is that all your children? He said, yes, that is, is all. I said, okay, except that, 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 that small boy. That one is not, I can't be him. That one is a bush boy. Not be a house boy. Nobody believed in him. 
When he went to the field to pull down Goliath, nobody believed in him. His brother said, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. You this boy, you do get much. Shut up. Shut up. He said, I won't shut up. Until they saw him brought down the head of Goliath before they came out from their hiding places. Don't let people's opinion rule your life. Anyone is permitted to say what they feel concerning you. But what God has said concerning you is a final. And lastly, destiny killer is procrastination. Procrastination. Doing what you should do today, tomorrow. Procrastination is a destiny killer. Run away from it. Whatever tells you that, oh, tomorrow, 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 is pushing your success, pushing away your greatness. Whatever you should do today, don't postpone it till tomorrow. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But one thing I know, that wherever you are falling before, they will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. They will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. No matter who you are, no matter how worse people say you are, you can start a new beginning today. A new beginning of greatness. And how do you do that? By giving your life to Jesus. You are here, you are not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus. Please give me this opportunity. I will pray this simple prayer with you. You will be born again. Jesus will come into your life. And your destiny will never remain the same. Maybe you give your life to Jesus, but you must stay there. You can return to them. And then, everything becomes, begins to change. And right before your face, you become the envy of your world. If you are here, you are not born again. You have not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Please give me this opportunity to pray with you now. And Jesus will come into your life. You will be born again. And your destiny will never remain the same. Wherever you are, therefore, you want to give your life to Jesus, I ask you to please rise up on your feet now. You want to give your life to Jesus or you want to return back to God. You know where you were before until things began to go down because you turned away from God. Wherever you are, you want to return. Rise up now. Now, as I'm speaking now, something tells you I'm the one pastor is talking about. Rise up, rise up. I will pray a very simple prayer with you. You're born again and Jesus will come to your life. If you are rising up, take your Bible, your bag, whatever you came to church with, walk towards me right now. And quickly, I will be praying for you. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly, come quickly. Let me clap for them. They are coming, they are coming, they are coming. Rise up now. Now, now, forget about who is looking at you. It is an individual decision. It is a decision that you must take now. And then your life will never remain the same. Come quickly. Church, keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. They are coming. Keep clapping for them. They are coming. Come quickly. Thank you. Come quickly. Come quickly. Jesus is waiting for you. Come quickly. Come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. See how you are struggling in life. Are you not tired of struggling? Give it over to Jesus. Let him take it over. And then your destiny will have a new color. Keep clapping for them. They are coming. Somebody is coming from the back. Somebody is rushing. Somebody is coming from the back. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, see them coming. See them coming. Satan is losing. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping for them. Somebody is making this decision now. Something is telling you, go. Another thing is telling you, sit down. You are battling in your mind now. That's the devil. He wants to stop you. Better jump up now. Jump up. 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 And begin to go. Begin to go. Don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it tomorrow. God does not want to postpone your blessing till tomorrow. Now is the accepted time. God bless you. If you are coming, come quickly, come quickly. I'm still waiting for seven more persons. Wherever you are, I'm still waiting for seven more persons. Wherever you are, take that step now. Take that step now. God bless you. Come, 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 come. God bless you. Come, come, come. I'm waiting for four more persons. Wherever you are, come quickly now. Rise up, 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 rise up. You mustn't miss your miracle. Rise up wherever you are. God bless you. Three more persons. Come quickly. Join us quickly before we pray. Thank you. Come quickly. All those in front, can I ask you to please bow your head as I pray with you. Say these words after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I recognize I'm a sinner. You died for me. You saved me from my sins. Jesus, my heart is open. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for receiving me. Now I know I am born again. Amen.
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious souls that you have brought into your kingdom today. I ask that you keep them. Let none of them be lost in the name of Jesus. We put, I command your hands upon them. Satan, you have no portion to these ones from today. They are saved and secured. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Please open your eyes. God bless you. Congratulations. I decree in your business. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. In your careers. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. In your family. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. Concerning your health. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. Concerning your finances. New beginnings in the name of Jesus. Whatever area the devil has said you will not succeed. I decree you will be celebrated in the name of Jesus. Every area that is blocked. It is open for you in the name of Jesus. That exam. The next step you take, you will pass them in the name of Jesus. That job, the next step you take, you are coming with a testimony in the name of Jesus. Whatever area that the enemy has manipulated you before, I command a new beginning in the name of Jesus. I decree a turnaround for you in the name of Jesus. Grace to take steps. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Return with a testimony, natural favor, and blessings on every side. None of you will be stranded this week. The God of Bishop Edebo will help you this week. You will find help at every point you need it. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, shout the loudest. Amen. amen. Don't forget, next Sunday service is our covenant day of possessing our possession. Ushers will give you a handbill as you go. Read them and distribute that handbill. And make sure you are coming with at least two persons next Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen nor ear heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations. God bless you. Shake three people and tell them, take steps.